What is going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here back with another video for you guys and today's gonna be a little bit different. Today I, you know, it's not really a series that I'm creating but just something that I think I'm gonna be doing in the future and just basically pick out my phone and talking to you guys uh, about various topics and such and uh, thought it'd be cool, you know, kind of connect with you guys a little bit more, get your guys' opinion, get, you know, everyone uh, kind of in a group discussion. So, uh, so today I want to talk about becoming a successful indie game developer and what you do, what you can do to uh, heighten your chances of becoming a success and, you know, actually being those guys like, uh, like Notch who, you know, just recently sold Minecraft to Microsoft for $2.5 billion, which is huge for an indie game developer. I mean, that's, I mean, unheard of. But, uh, so yeah, I've got a couple tips and, uh, and tricks to tell you guys about how to become an indie, uh, successful indie game developer. Let's go ahead and take one step back and say, what is an indie game developer? An indie game developer is an independent, uh, you know, developer that does not have a publisher, right? So that means you don't have to answer to people. You don't have to, uh ask questions, hey, can I put this in the game, can I put that in the game, Get, uh, have to wait for responses and all of that stuff. You don't need to put it up to their specifications, you put it up to your own specifications. And uh, you really need to take advantage of that when becoming an indie game developer. You know, you can really put whatever you want into the game, right? So over the years, I've talked to a lot of indie game developers, successful and non-successful. And I've gotten a lot of advice, I mean, and I am myself in an am an aspiring uh, indie game developer. I'm actually working on my game right now, Far From Home, with uh, Rex Furry. For those of you that might know him, we've actually been in production with our game for about four months now, and uh, it's going pretty good, and we're hoping to launch soon. Uh, so with that being said, I mean, over the years, I've again, I've talked to a lot of programmers, and I've gotten a lot of advice, and I kind of wanted to shoot that advice down to you guys. And, you know, if you guys have anything to add to it or something like that, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. I'd love to read it. I'd love to get a discussion going about uh, different ways and, and and how you can go about doing this. But So I've kind of narrowed it down into three different topics here. And the first one is going to be, it's actually pretty simple, create a game, right? The 99% of these indie game developers are not successful because they never finish their products. I mean, you're looking at, uh, uh, tons of people with great ideas, great aspirations, yet they don't finish products. And why don't they finish their products or games? Because they spend way, way too long on a project when they haven't even released one project yet. I mean, you need to, so my rule of thumb here is you need to create a game under six months for your first game. Create a game that takes less than six months to make and release it, right? Your first game is going to be a flop no matter what way you slice it, okay? Uh, that's why you want to create your game within six months, have a nice basic design. It doesn't need to be revolutionary to the game world. It doesn't need to be an FPS, MMORPG, you know, that some of you guys, you know, want, want to create for your first game, which takes years and years. I mean, MMORPGs are the hardest genre to create. So you don't want to step into that world when you haven't even released one thing yet. So six months now the reason I say your first game is going to be a flop and it always is is because you have no knowledge of publishing uh, promoting you know you've never released something you've never gone through that process and learned how to do it yeah you might be an awesome programmer but are you an awesome uh, promoter you know can you promote your game can you uh, are you you know it's all of that stuff you know what marketplaces do you want to get it on do you want to get it on Steam okay well go through that process of getting it on Steam what are you gonna do green light it what you know uh, so that's you know you really need to go through that step and that is something you definitely need to go through before you can be successful so it, it doesn't really matter if your game you know you, you release your game it sells 10 copies or 20 or even a hundred who cares that 100 or 10 copies is nothing compared to the knowledge you've learned of actually going through the process of publishing a game, putting it out there, maybe creating a Twitter, getting just a little tiny following for you, and uh, and all of that stuff. So it's definitely worth it to just create a simple game and get it out on the marketplace. It, it definitely is. So that is my number one tip for you guys. Um, number two, 
And this one is also kind of simple, and you'll find that a lot of these are actually kind of simple. Number two is design the game, don't worry about programming, right? A lot of you guys, and I've seen it everywhere, you get hooked with this, oh, check out the new algorithms or the new engine I made that's gonna make the game so much more efficient and blah, 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 blah. Well, chances are, the guy playing your game, the guy or girl playing your game isn't a programmer, right? I know there's gonna be some that are program. Chances are they're not gonna be programmers, they're gonna be gamers. And do they really care about your awesome point algorithms that you made to make the lighting more efficient in your game? No. What they care about is, is the game fun, right? That's bottom line. So I see these guys going in like, you know, oh, I don't like uh, using Game Maker because, you know, it hands everything to you, or I don't like using, uh, you know, LWJGL or something like that, you know? Game Maker and LWJGL are exactly like, you know, maybe perhaps DirectX or uh, OpenGL, you know? They're libraries that you can use that are already made for you to make your life simpler. You know, when you start up a C++ project and uh, import DirectX, DirectX doesn't give everything to you. You still need to code the game. That's exactly what Game Maker or Java or, or those types of programs do. Yes, they give you things that will help you, but you still need to create the game. It's still a very, very huge process of creating that. So one thing I can say to you guys is worry about design, okay? Design should be your main focus when entering a game, right? You don't need to worry. Just think of programming as the grunt work. It's the work that needs to get done. And I know a lot of you guys came into this field because you love the programming side of it. But if you want to become a successful indie game developer, you definitely need to know how to... Uh, this guy's trying to pass me. And then he decided not to. You definitely, uh, you definitely need to know how to design a game, you know? Don't just go into a game and you know start programming it and wing it, right? That's not gonna work. I mean, I've done that many, many times and it has not worked. Don't go in, I'm talking, get into, get into a call with your team or maybe yourself, spend a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months designing your game fully out so you know exactly what it's gonna look like when the final product hits. Once you've designed your game fully, then you go into programming it and you've already got everything uh, settled, right? Now there are gonna be some design changes as you program, maybe some things will fit, maybe some things didn't work exactly how you'd like it to work, but that's all in you know good measure, right? So worry about designing your game, less about programming the game, okay? That's gonna be a number one key uh, along with my first number one tip. I mean, these are all good tips. I mean, I'm not gonna give you any just garbage here, but Definitely, definitely worry about design. Do not wing the game. And, uh, and if you design it properly and you go through an entire hierarchy of what you're gonna do, it's gonna be super beneficial to you because you already know what the game's gonna look like when it gets done. You know, when you go into winging it, you're, you're winging it. <laughs> so you have no idea. There's a whole mystery level there, all right? So that's number two. Number three, is a little bit more uh, complex than number one and number two. Number three is, and these are from a lot of people I've talked to, uh, have said this, and uh, you know I've been in countless chat rooms with you know these famous indie game developers. I'm not going to mention any names. I don't know if they want me to drop or anything like that. But basically, another thing that you're going to want in your game is some sort of social build, social aspect, right? You're going to want something that you're the people playing can brag to their friends about, right? Like, whether that be leaderboards, whether that be a store, whether that be full-on multiplayer, it doesn't really matter. Whether that be, you know, like levels that they, cre they can create and share with their friends or something like that. You need to have some sort of social aspect in the game, especially in this day and age. I mean, if you look at all these countless um, uh, indie games, I mean, a lot of them have this social aspect built in, and that's why they are successful. I mean, who wants to play a game that nobody knows about and no one's and they go tell their friends and their friends just don't care because I mean they're not playing it so you know it's this full single player blah 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 you got a little story or something like that whatever I strongly recommend you add some sort of multiplayer not even multiplayer some sort of social aspect into the game whether again that be leaderboards I mean it can be as simple as leaderboards you know but 
definitely you need something that can cross connect. Now that might be a little bit more complex for you beginners out there to kind of wrap your head around, oh crap, now I need you know the social aspect in my game. Uh, your first game doesn't need it. Again, six months, max. First game doesn't need it. Your first game's gonna be a flop anyway. So go ahead and you know go through the publishing process and all that. Then maybe your second game, third game, maybe experiment with that type of social aspect stuff. And uh, you can definitely get something going. And uh, and definitely make a name for yourself. You know, you definitely you you can't underestimate the social aspect of the entire business. I mean, you can make an awesome game and nobody could know about it because you don't have a following. You don't you know you nobody knows your work. You don't have a Twitter. Maybe maybe you should make a website for your stuff. Maybe make a, a website for your games that you know you can link people to and all that fun stuff. But that is definitely. Uh, a must for all of these are musts for becoming a successful indie game developer right if you guys have anything else to add to this video go ahead and shoot it down in the comment section uh, I'd love to get a conversation going about this topic and let me get let me know if you guys want any more uh, of these videos where I just kind of like give my opinions or my two cents on these different topics right so uh, go and like, go and subscribe, and uh, I hope to get a discussion started. So I will see you guys next time. Peace.